All right, so today we're gonna to be studying for the PSAT, and this is practice test number one. If you guys have this, you guys can go along, but if not, you can just base it off of my questions. So let's begin with question number one. A babysitter earns $8 an hour for babysitting to two children, an additional $3. <laughs> Tip, when both children are put on bed on time, if the babysitter gets the children on bed on time, what expressions could be used to determine how much the babysitter earned? So basically, we have to write a literary equation. So let's just say X is the number of hours, right? Because the number of children don't really matter because there, it says it's two children. So they're not gonna be less or more children. So C and D are automatically eliminated. And then it says for every hour, which is $8 an hour. So it's gonna be eight X plus the additional $3 tip. So we add three to that if they're put on bed in time. If the babysitter gets the children to bed in time, so it means they get the $3 tip, this is the total amount that they're actually gonna be paid, meaning the answer has to be A. So the tip to do this question is to just write everything out as you read it. Okay, moving on to the question two. If x, y is a solution to the equation above and y is less than zero, or y is not equal to zero, what is the ratio x, y? So let's simplify this right here. I'm just gonna multiply everything out, three times x and three times y. So this gives me three x plus three y is equal to y. And now let me move everything with y onto one side. So I'm just gonna subtract three y on both sides. Give me three x is equal to y minus three y, which is equal to negative two y. And now I'm just gonna put a random value for x and y. So I'll just say x is equal to the two. These are random values, right? So you don't have, they're not technically correct, but they technically mathematically are. So if x is equal to two, three times two is six. So six is equal to negative two y. Divide both sides by negative two. Y is gonna equal to six divided by negative two, which is negative three. And Y is equal to negative three when X is equal to two. So what is X over Y? That's just gonna equal to two over negative three, X over Y. Two over negative three is the same as negative two thirds, meaning your answer has to be B. Okay, moving on to question three. Which ordered pair X, Y satisfies the systems of equation above? So in order to solve this, we're gonna use something called elimination. So what we need to do is, because you see how everything's fractional, you never wanna solve a systems of equation with fractions. So what I'm gonna to do to this top equation is multiply by the least common multiple, which seems to be four. Because four times one half gives us two X, negative one fourth times four gives us negative Y is equal to four times 10. Make sure to multiply both sides. That's equal to 40. Four times 10 is 40. And next over here, our least common multiple is going to be eight. And eight times one eight is X. Eight times negative one eight is also at one, so that's Y. So X minus Y is equal to 19 times eight, which is gonna give us 152. And now since we have this, we can use elimination because we have Y and Y on both equations. So we subtract two X minus X gives us X, negative Y minus negative Y cancels out. So that's zero, and that's equal to 40 minus 152, which is equal to negative 112, right? We're just subtracting everything, and that's how I got x is equal to negative 112. And looking at our solution set, the only answer where x, the first value, is equal to negative 112 is in A. Now right there is going to be your answer. Okay, moving on. So we have question four right here. We have this geometry question. So triangle ABC above is isosceles with AB is equal to AC and BC is equal to 48. The ratio of DE to DF is five to seven. What is the length of DC? So in order to do this question, what we need to do is write down or just jot down everything we're given. So AB is equal to AC. So these two, these two sides are equal and BC is equal to 48. So this right here, this whole thing right here is 48. The ratio of DE to DF is five to seven. DE to DF, where's D? DE to DF is five to seven. So I'll just call this five X and I'll call this seven X, right? Where X is a number that we're not given yet. So what is DC? Well, looking at these two triangles right here, they both have a right angle. Let me just write down these two triangles. So we have this one right here, EBD, where E is gonna be our right angle. EBD. Or over here, we have DFC, where F is going to be our right angle. So DFC. And now looking at it, 
because you know how in the beginning of the question, right, it's an isosceles triangle. That means this angle right here has to equal this angle right here. So angle C is equal to angle B. Nice. Angle C is equal to angle B. And now given angle, 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 because this angle is equal to this angle. Angle F is equal to angle E because they're both right angles. We can say these two triangles are similar. And because they're in a ratio of 5 to 7, given to this, we can find DC. DC right here. The total length of BC is 48. And if 48 is equal to a ratio of 5 to 7, that's just equal to 12x. 5 plus 7 is 12, and that's x. Therefore, x is equal to 4, and DC is equal to the 7 part, right? Should be the longer part, 7 part. So that's 7 times 4, which is going to give us... 28. So the key to this question is to use proper ratios and then using common geometry, geometric properties. Okay, moving on, let's go to question five. So in a certain game, a player can either solve hard or easy puzzles. A player earned 30 points for solving an easy puzzle and 60 points for solving a hard puzzle. Tina solved a total of 50 puzzles playing the game, earning 1950 points in total. How many hard puzzles did Tina solve? So this is a word problem, and it requires us to write an equation. So what is the equation we're supposed to write? So she earns 30 points for an easy question. So I'll just say E represents the easy questions, and then 60 points for a hard question. So I'll just call that H. Well, if she solved a total of 50 puzzles, so that means that E, e plus H has to equal to 50, right? Because if E represents the easy questions, H represents the hard questions, and total, there's 50. So that's how I got E plus H is equal to 50. And now, if you get 30 points for solving an easy question, so that's 30 times the number of easy questions plus 60 for each hard one. So that's going to be 60 times H. That's equal to the total of 1950 points. So this is the systems equation we're going to have. And we're going to use a similar method to the one we solved in question three to solve this one. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the top one by 30. 30 times E is 30E. 30 times H is 30H. And we also have to multiply 30 by the 50. So that's equal to 1,500. And now we could use elimination because we have 30E and 30E on both equations. So we have to subtract it. Once you subtract them, they cancel out. 60H minus 30H gives us 30H. And that's equal to 1950 minus 1500, which is 450. Divide both sides by 30, giving us H is equal to 450 divided by 30, which is equal to 15. And the question is asking for how many hard puzzles do we have? Well, hard puzzles is 15, because H is equal to 15, right? Remember, H represents the hard questions, meaning your answer has to be 